about 40 years ago, I was working with enhanced Landsat uh, images, which made a great base for all the other kinds of geophysical, and geological, and geochemical data that could be superimposed on top of it. And I imagine that, uh, I, I know the world has moved a long way since then, but I, two days ago I got a message from NASA saying that the International Space Station was going over my zip code. And so I was out there and watched it go over. <laughs> and my question is, after this magnificent presentation of the history of map making, is there a, a segment somewhere in this map center that will be addressing the current technology? Oh, absolutely. Great question. Um, I'm actively looking to collect exactly that type of material. Uh, do you remember the Aero satellite? Sure. I used to get in 1966 weekly mailings of the black and white images in strips. I, I wish I had kept them. I didn't keep them. But I'll, we're looking for exactly that type of material because it's a big part of the story. And 50 years from now, 100 years from now, that will, that will be a huge part of the story. We're also looking to preserve GIS, the products of GIS. Julie knows, and Salim both know a lot about that. A lot of GIS work that's done is what we would call a little bit throwaway. And it's, it's so, Stanford is so good in its library to think about preserving the GIS tables, the databases, uh, the software itself. So yes, by all means, we, we, that's a big part of the 20th century. Uh, and that really ties to Long Now Foundation as well, and Long Now is working with Stanford and with the MAP, uh, the, the, the MAP Center, and, and Julie back here. Uh, as I'm sure many of you know, for example, the original data from the Viking lander, uh, all that stuff collected at enormous cost can't be read because there's no longer a machine around that can read the tapes, and besides, the iron filings are falling off. So they're going to tackle that stuff. Mm -hmm.